All right, what's up, my peeps? Joshua Smithy with another GSD Mode podcast, real estate tip, where every single week I come to delivering different tips, tactics, and strategies to help you get shit done in your real estate business and help ensure that you're crushing and dominating your real estate goals. All right, so today's question comes from Zlayton Omerjik. And dude, I sincerely apologize if I butchered your name. What <laughs> wasn't my intent. Um, but great question from, from Zlayton here. So Zlayton asks or says, hey, I'm moving to a new city. How do I get going in a new market? So I'm really going to cover this. And whether you're moving to, and I don't know if it's a new city or a new state, new city and a new state. You know, so I'm going to cover this with the assumption that completely new market. You don't have an SOI. Don't know anything about that market as of yet. That's what I'm going to break down and cover this because that will get you covered regardless of your situation. Look, this is something, you know, that, um, you know, can be quite common for, for us in real estate, you know, right? Like well, at some point, like we might, we might want to make a move, you know, with what we live in life, something I help a lot of my coaching clients with. And even some of my agents, like one of my top agents on my team um, who lived here in Phoenix, you know, with, with, uh, with, um, you know, obviously when you came and started working with me on the team, lived here in Phoenix. Um, then from there, you know, uh, started having a family, decided to move from Phoenix to Tennessee, you know, with their family and, uh, you know, did, wanted to build his business out there. And he's, you know, done that and doing that and doing that successfully. But at the same time, he's still to this day, one of the top agents on my team closing deals here in Phoenix, even though he lives all the way in Tennessee, you know, so like, this is something that I've helped so many do, whether it's internally with my real estate team or my real estate company or my coaching clients is a common thing. And look, cause I don't want any of us to ever feel handcuffed. You know, like maybe you love real estate, but maybe you just freaking can't stand where you live. You know, maybe you did, but you don't anymore. You want to go somewhere new, you know, um, you, you don't, there's no reason to feel handcuffed with where you at, especially with what technology is, you know, today, like this is something that's very doable, very possible to go out there and, you know, scale this stuff. Um, so great question. I'm excited to do a deep dive into this. Okay. So there's really going to be two overall components that we're going to cover here in this podcast. You know, the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to leverage the business that you've already built and how to possibly keep that going even though you're going to be in this new market and building the business in the new market. And then we'll get into, okay, how to build that up as well. So if you want to do like my teammates doing, you know, where dude, I'm mean, and he's still popping. I mean, he did I don't know, 10 plus million a year here in Phoenix this last year while he is still living in Tennessee. You know, right. And, and like, you know, so, so, you know, you can, you can, you know, do both and, and, and that can, and not that you have to do that forever permanently, but it can help with the transition, you know, of, of at least while it might take you, you know, six months to start getting your legs and getting consistent commissions going in the new market. Okay. At least you have this revenue that you're able to leverage and you're not walking away and having to abandon something that you spent all this time, energy and money already in building. So we're going to break down those two different things. So how to leverage your current market, current business while you're making this move and, and building their business in the next market, and then how to build up that business in that new city, new state, you know, and so forth. Now, real quick, before we jump into these and break these down, if you are a real estate agent, team leader, or brokerage owner, and maybe your business is down, maybe you're struggling in your business, your business is declining, which I know is happening for so many of you right now, or maybe your business is stagnant, maybe it's growing just not at the pace that you truly want it to grow at, and you just do not know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. If that is you, if you don't know what you need to get dialed in and what exactly you need to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go, I want to invite you to schedule a 100% free 100% zero pressure coaching Zoom call with me personally. This is going to be a one hour long coaching call with me and you. Here's what's going to happen on this call. We're going to break down where your business is currently at, what your 12 month goals are, what your long term goals are, what you are currently doing, what your biggest obstacles are. And then once I've got all that information, I'm going to, and I'll guide you through this, even if you don't have full clarity on that stuff. Like, look, dude, I'm coaching for a lot of years. Um, I'll guide you through this. I'll get the information that I need to be able to then walk you through what my recommended strategy is to get you from where you're at to where you want to go in the quickest, most effective, most efficient, profitable manner possible. So it's like, hey, if we were to switch shoes or trade places, and if I was you, here's exactly what I would do to get from where you're at to where it is that you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient, profitable manner possible. So if you want to be have a free coaching session with one of the top realtors, team leaders on the planet that knows exactly how to get you dialed in, if you want to take advantage of this and make sure that we eliminate all that guesswork, give you that full clarity inside your real estate business, 
go to www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. Now, full disclosure, we spent about 50 minutes. That's more than enough time to get you fully dialed in on all the things that we talked about. Last 10 minutes, I'm going to spend a few minutes walking through what my coaching program entails. See if it's a possible fit for you. And if it is cool, if not, hey, that's okay too. We can still be friends. Everything I do, zero pressure. I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to you know, make you feel guilty, make you feel bad. If it's for you, cool. If not, that's okay too. What you, I'm not going to give you my word here that you will know whether you ever do any element of business with me or not. You're going to know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient, profitable manner. So again, you want to do that, www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. All right, let's jump on in here. Okay, so the first element of this is, okay, you're making this move. Let's set up the infrastructure and strategy in place so you can keep doing business and you don't have to walk away from everything that you built up. So here, like, okay, number one, you're going to have to, you know, keep your license where you're at. Um, and this is if you want to do this. Now, I would recommend that you do this. All right, so keep your license. You know, we, we, you know, you got to keep your license active. Obviously, you got to be with a brokerage or same brokerage or whatever, whatever. You know, th those are kind of the basics, right? The obvious. You know, then from there, make sure that you keep your, you know, your CRM, your database. You know, in that market, we're going to continue working your database. Then from there, any lead generation or prospecting based strategies that you've been doing that are working that you can continue doing, but you know, from this other, this other city, this other place. So maybe you're, you know, maybe you're hitting online leads, you know, maybe you're hitting, um, you know, you're going after phone prospecting, intentional phone prospecting, you know, following up with your past client repeat referral business, all of that stuff. We want to continue those things in place. So then that way you can keep, you know, keep converting that business and getting that business. Now, here is the key though. Now, if you don't, like if you already have a team, in place, then okay, like you just keep doing what you're doing and just running the team virtually, right? Um, but let's just make the assumption that you're an individual agent, and you don't have a team in place. Here's what you need to do you need to go find several, not just one, but several, like three to start with agents that you know, that you like, that you trust, that you know can get the job done. Because obviously you're going to be in a different location where you cannot go on those appointments. You cannot go service and support those clients, you know, right? But like, you know that, okay, like you set the appointment, like you, you get, like essentially you're playing ISA, right? In your own business. So it's like, okay, like you're, you're, you're doing the lead gen, the prospecting, you're setting the appointment. You're then handing it off effectively um, to, to, you know, one of those three agents, they can take it, they can convert them, they can get the closing and you split those 50-50. Agents will do that all day long because the hardest part for most in this industry, not that it's difficult, but the hardest part for most is converting leads into appointments. Like most in this industry are pretty damn good. And this is why, you know, teams have blown up. And this is why so many people join teams, you know, because they just aren't good at lead gen and lead conversion, you know, um, or they just don't enjoy it. They, but like once they get face to face, you know, with somebody, then they're pretty damn good. So, so that's the easy part, like getting face to face, converting, you know, it's like people, people enjoy that part of the business, but that's all the easy part, you know, converting the buyer consultation, converting the listing presentation, you know, getting them on a contract, getting it closed. Like that's the easy part, the, the much more difficult part for most, not that it's difficult. We all know this, or hopefully you know this. It's not that it's difficult. It's just that most choose to have a difficult time with it and never master the skill sets to go out there and do this stuff. So you will find an abundance of realtors that will do this. And look, if you don't have them within your brokerage, if you can't find them within your brokerage, you don't have to because of the, the referral fee component. Like, I don't care who the age, like what brokerage or what, it doesn't matter. We're just going to have this agreement that, that, okay, we're going to split anything 50, 50 that I send you. And essentially boom, you're playing ISA with those. And the reason why I say to have at least three is look, one or two of these isn't going to work out. It's just, and, and maybe you get lucky and the, you know, one does, but you know, you want to have options just in case. It's like, I never feel comfortable in any of my businesses when I only have one staff member per seat. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, I want to have multiple staff members, have everybody cross chain trained just in case that person quits or they get fired or they have to leave. You know, right. Like I'm not vulnerable. 
not saying that I always go out there and hire multiple, like I'm going to you know grow my business responsibly. Um, um, but I never feel comfortable with that. So in this scenario and situation, I would go out there and find a few, um, um, you know, with that. And then again, you're just, you know, continuing to lead gen, continuing to, you know, follow up, continuing to prospect, continuing to follow up with the past clients, continue to work your database, you know, right. Um, but you're doing it from the point of an ISA. So you're selling, you know, then you sell the agents, you have the successful pass off, you know, process, all of that, all easy to do. You know, people don't necessarily like to feel passed off if they feel like they're being passed off. You know, um, but if you're selling the value in it, you know, right, and you have the right language, you know, like people, people will follow a process if they're given a process. But if you, if you're the key here is, and this is, you know, when you're building a team, you know, you got to understand this, which is what you're kind of doing, even though it's not a formal team, you know, is you've got to, number one, you got to have the process dialed in, but then number two, you got to be selling the value of those agents and selling the value of your structure. Right. Because it's like, okay, yeah, we're passing you off. Let's just say I'm passing somebody off to a showing agent. Yeah. Right. Now, if they people don't want to feel passed off, but if you get, if you sell the value to why it's been beneficial to them, yeah. Right. Okay. So, you know, now let's just say, okay, I've got them signed, whatever. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce you to Jill. Now, Jill is our, our showing specialist. So I want you to think of Jill as your personal home showing chauffeur. So where Jill's job comes in is she's going to accommodate your schedule because it's really important that we get into all the properties that you want to see as quickly as possible. And look, we know you're busy and, and your time can be limited. So we need to make sure that we get you in and, and accommodate your schedule as much as we possibly can. So that's why, why you know Jill's position exists to be able to accommodate your schedule. And again, think of her as your own personal home showing chauffeur so we can quickly get into all the properties that you want and need to see, which is really important. Then from there, and Jill and I communicate every step of the way, we're all on the same page. Then from there, once you find the home, you know, that, that, uh, you want to move forward with, you know, uh, then that's where I'm going to get reinvolved and I'm going to make, that's where I'm going to start working with you again. And we're going to make sure that I negotiate the best terms, the best deals, get you that property, you know, and so forth. So when we're explaining this in the right way and, and selling as to why it's beneficial for the client, right. Then from there, it's, it's received very well and not received in a negative manner. Okay. So that is, you know, building that up and that, that way you're not walking away from the business, you know, that, that you've already, you know, spent all this time building up and still got consistent closings, you know, coming in and look, you can even continue to grow and expand it if you want to, like, you don't necessarily even need to start business in the new city or new state, but let's just assume that you do. Okay, then from there, new city, new state, let's just assume that you don't know a soul there, you have no SOI, you know, so what are we going to go out there and do? Okay, so we're going to, you know, and then of course, make sure that we've got, you know, website CRM for the new market. And, and if you have a website CRM all in one, you know, my recommendation there is, you know, to have two separate for the different markets, you know, from a branding perspective, so you don't create that confusion, you know, from a pixeling perspective, retargeting perspective, and then, you know, from a clean list perspective as, as well. So you can, you know, easily segment. You, I mean, you can do it the other way, but it's just like, like e even if I'm using the same CRM, I'm going to create a sub CRM for one market, another sub CRM for another market, just like I do with recruiting. Like, okay, I'll have this CRM that I'm using for, you know, buyers and, and sellers, and I'll create a sub CRM within that for, um, um, you know, just agent recruiting, just for simplicity, clean, you know, having clean lists, all of that stuff. And, and, and I just find that to be much more effective, you know, right. And, and it's very inexpensive to, you know, have your CRM then add a sub CRM for you, you know, underneath that, you know, um, and if you don't have one that does that, just hit us up at perfect storm mode. We got your back. We'll take care of you. Um, okay. So then from there, of course, we got to have your business plan in place. How many closings do you want to build up? Cause that's going to dictate how much action you're needing to take and all of that stuff, you know, um, cause once we know how many closings you need to close in the new market and what your timeline is, then from there, we can break this down right? Like, okay, if you want to close, let's just say a listing a week. Okay. Well then I know you're going to have to do a hundred dials a day, 10 conversations a day, Monday through Friday, you know, these specific sources with these specific scripts and then boom, you know, like, like we got it, we got to know what you got to do to win each and every day. So that's kind of the basics and things that you probably already know. Right. But then from there, what I recommend for strategy is look, you need to go after strategy of those that have the highest urgency, especially in this market, those that have the highest urgency, highest pain points where they need to. So those that are experiencing the most pain with their current situation are those that have the highest urgency, you know, right? Because um, we want to get your business rocking as soon as possible in this new market. So I would recommend that you be listing focused in the new market. Um, that way you have time to balance both listings are going to be where, whereas especially as, you know, if you're running solo, 
um, is going to easily be most effective and efficient for you. You know, then from there, okay, there's five niches right now that are hands down crushing it the most um, um, when it comes to going out there and acquiring listings that are experiencing the most pain, aka the most urgency. So that's going to be FISBOs. Expire. Not that you need all of these, depending on what your goals are. You might, depending on how big the market is that you're going into, like here in Phoenix, if I want to list one or two listings a week, I just need to go after one of these. I don't need all five. You know, so it just depends on what your market size is, how many opportunities. You got to make sure that you have enough dials, you know, and so forth. So, okay, hey, I'm going to, you know, FISBOs and expired. So that's going to be, you know, two different niches, but those are always have been great, are great, always will be great. You know, right? Quick way to go out there and get business and have high conversions if you're damn good at what you're doing. Uh, going after investors, you know, um, investors that, you know, own these properties. You got tenant eviction skyrocketing right now. You got rents coming down. We got insurance taxes going up. HOA is going up. Cost of maintenance going up. So pain, 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 right? Um, um, this is what we want to go after. We got notice of defaults. People that are 30 plus days behind on their mortgage. They need to sell, need to sell fast. Um, um, we got people going through a divorce. Yeah, right. Um, we're going through divorces, tougher economic times, unfortunately, tougher financial times leads to unfortunately increase in rise in divorces. So these are all great niches. Like if I want to start stacking two listings a week, by the end of next week, like this is like in a one week period of time, like this is what I'm going after. Yeah, right. Um, um, these. Then from there on the buy side, you know, um, going out there and doing open houses, it's going to help you get familiar with the neighborhoods, help you get familiar with different things. You know, um, um, uh, and and that's a quick way to go out there and get buy a business. Now, this other thing that I'm going to recommend, this is a long term play, but this can. Not saying that you got to do this, but it can be a great way to learn your new market, new area is building out your YouTube channel. Because when we're building out YouTube channels, like we're going out there and creating uh, uh, videos like cost of living in XYZ city, top 10 reasons to move to XY city, pros and cons of living in XY city, you know, top five neighborhoods in XYZ city. Yeah, fun thing, you know. So, so when we're doing that, it forces us to do the research, gather the intel, gather the data, you know, right? So, you know, it's a way to go out there and kind of enhance your expertise and build that up while you're learning this new market and whatever. Even though that's a longer term play, meaning that, like, okay, right now, time of me creating this video or this podcast, it's January 7th. So this might more be like your 2025 plan, but just for getting that local market expertise, you know, that that's huge. Then from there, here's what I do with new brand new agents that are new to, to real estate and like on my team is I have them spending two hours a day. So this might be helpful for you. You know, one, out, one of those hours a day is going through the MLS and, and that hour a day going through the MLS, we're looking at any new actives that hit the market last 24 hours, and you know, it's pending last 24 hours, and that's sold in the last 24 hours, and anything that's got pulled off market. So expires, canceled withdrawals, and just in the last 24 hours, just every day, pulling that report, going through each of those listings individually, looking at all the photos, all the MLS property information, the tax records. And if you do that for 30 straight days, you very quickly will know yeah, you know, what the popular zip codes are, what the popular neighborhoods are, who the popular builders are, what the popular school districts are, what the popular features are, what things are selling at price per square foot, so forth. Like, dude, it just fast forwards that trajectory. Then from there, the other hour day, pick one neighborhood and go out there and drive it, drive all the streets in the neighborhood, all the, you know, get to know the parks, the schools, the local, you know, businesses associated right to that neighborhood. And then while you're driving through that, pick two vacant properties that you're going to start previewing. So you can go out there and start getting used to the real estate in that area and those areas in there. So do those two things for 30 days. That also is your preview on those properties. You create social media content around those, you know, start creating that kind of social awareness, you know, different things too. Um, um, so that's kind of what we do. I do with brand new agents to fast forward their local, I call it local market expertise, you know, right. Um, that I, we need them to go out there and learn, you know, with that. Then from there, I mean, cause market to market, it's different as far as, you know, sometimes how the real, like the, the hyper local stuff of like how the real estate is constructed, like here in Phoenix, homes are built a lot different than they are in Michigan. You know, they're built differently. Subdivisions are, you know, possibly laid out differently. You know, um, um, there could be some differences there. But when it comes to the overall fundamentals of building a real estate business, it doesn't matter if your business is anywhere in the U.S., anywhere in Canada, any, like anywhere on this planet. It's pretty much the same shit. And this is coming from a guy that coaches at a very high level. You know, realtors, team leaders, and broker owners from all of the United States, all over Canada, 
you know, other countries, well, New Zealand, Portugal, other places too, you know, um, um, you know, the fundamentals of business is business fundamentals of building real estate business are the fundamentals, right? So, but you got to get to know that local real estate, you know, which can differentiate slightly for each market, but dude, within 30 days, you got that shit down and got it covered. So those are the, you know, from a strategic standpoint, the moves that I'm making, that's how I would go through and make this situation take place. Cause look, dude, there's no reason just like when I hire brand new agents, and I get them rock and roll and making 20, 30 grand a month, you know, within six months. Like there's no real, like don't allow yourself to have this limiting belief of, you know, I can't go out there and get these listings. I can't go out there and get this business. Like, you know, real estate, you know how to sell real estate, have that confidence, right? It's a different market, might be different contracts, a few different things, but I'll say it doesn't fucking matter. You know, like don't, don't let this have a limiting belief thinking that the, the shit's going to take forever, take a long time. No, you got all the expertise and experience you've built up thus far. Like th there's no reason you shouldn't be starting to take listings within your first couple of weeks of taking action in your new market, as long as you got the right strategy, but really important. And I'll talk about a lot about this on the podcast, but right now got to nail the strategy strategies, who you are targeting. So got to be, we got to make sure we are targeting the people with the highest probability of buying and selling, meaning the most pain, the most urgency to go out there and sell based on the market that we're experiencing right now, right? So you got to have the right strategy. Number two, you got to have the winning process in place. So the process is just what you're doing, when you're doing it, how frequently you're doing it. Yeah, you know, right. So we got to make sure that we have the right follow-up protocols, the right, you know, the right process. Then from there, you got to make sure your skill set's dialed in. Yeah, I don't care like if you're in a current city or new city, whatever. If you don't have these three things dialed on this market, you're going to be experiencing resistance. You're going to be experiencing pain. Yeah, like that. this is what pros do is they get these three things dialed in. There's other things that pros do too. But when it comes to client acquisition, meaning your ability to go out there and uh, acquire new clients and get those closings, these are the three most important elements when it comes to that. You know, then from there, okay, yeah, as we're scaling, we got to make sure we got all the right systems in place, tracking in place. We got to make sure eventually we know how to leverage the right people. You know, if you want to grow a big team or a brokerage um, or any element of a team or a brokerage, you know, if you want to grow a, a business and not be a solo, you know, preneur, you know, out there, you know, there's those other components. But those three things, if those are not dialed in in your business, you are going to experience resistance and struggle right now regardless if you stay in your current market or get to the other market. So get those three things dialed in. But anyway, hope that this helps and such a great question. Look, if you guys have questions that you would like me to answer here on the podcast to help you get dialed in with your specific situation, shoot me an email, joshua at gsdmode.com. And again, if you're an individual agent, real estate team leader, real estate brokerage owner, and, and like you do not know what you need to do exactly to get your business from where you're at to where you want to go, you know, it's like maybe your business is declining, maybe it's stagnant, maybe it's growing, but just not growing at the rate that you want it to do. It's like you're operating down here, but you know your full potential is way up here and you just do not know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. I invite you to schedule a 100% free, 100% zero pressure coaching call with me personally. This is going to be a one hour long Zoom call together. And on this call, we're going to break down where your business is at what your 12 month goals are, what your long-term goals are, what you are currently doing, what your biggest obstacles are. Then from there, I'm going to map out exactly what I recommend that you do to get from where you're at to where you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient, profitable manner possible. And I promise you by the end of this free coaching call, you are going to know exactly what you need to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. Um, uh, and again, the quickest, most effective, efficient, profitable, profitable time. I got your back. I got you covered. So if you want to schedule this, Go to www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. Now, full disclosure, I'm going to spend about 50 minutes getting everything dialed in that I just talked about, which is plenty of time. Like we have plenty enough time to make sure you have full clarity in everything that you need to do. Then after that, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about what my coaching program entails, seeing if it's a possible fit for you. And look, if it is cool, not that's okay too. You're going to have everything that you need to know to, to have that clarity to get from where you're at to where you want to go. So again, if it's for you, great. Not that's okay too. We can still be friends. I still promise you this will be a massively beneficial coaching call for you to get you dialed and give you that clarity that you need. So again, if you want to schedule that, go to www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. All right, you guys, truly appreciate you watching. Truly appreciate all your support. Keep crushing it. Keep kicking ass. And I will see you next time. Peace.